Hello, and welcome to the next session, session four, on social media for disaster risk management. Uh, today's session is sharing social media for dis dissemination of risk information. Let's get started. So first, as we've mentioned in our other sessions, it's important to understand who is using social media. This is why your target audience, the people you are directing your efforts to on social media, is very important. You can use data to understand the age, the gender, and any other important information about who is using social media and where they are getting their information from or what channels they are using. The key here is you want to target who is already using social media and have them as your target audience, whatever group of people these may be who are using the social media channel. So let's move on from here. Evidence of effective social media use. So how do you know that what you are doing is making a difference? Well, from an analytical perspective, there's a lot of tools already built in to a few of the very popular social media platforms. Facebook and Twitter have built in analytical systems that let you know who is looking at whatever content you are sharing. Uh, this is fairly easy to use and can be found on your Facebook and Twitter pages. Now, there are also ways that you can make your social media use a little bit more manageable. This is by using what are known as social media dashboards. Some popular ones include Buffer, Hootsuite, and a variety of others such as Sprout Social. Bitly is a social media tool that's used to shorten your website links. Now while Facebook and Twitter automatically shorten your links, Bitly is especially useful because you can make customized URLs to track the amount of clicks you get on that specific URL. So let's say you are sponsoring or helping to host or promote a specific event and you want to know how your efforts are paying off. Well, if you use a, uh, if you use Bitly, uh, you can measure exactly how many people uh, clicked on your link to give you a better idea of how uh, you are reaching your audience and how many people are actually clicking on uh, the source that would provide them more information. So it's important that you have your social media strategy uh, filled out and your objective uh, narrowed down. So how you want people to use um, the information that you provide them on social media. This will help you, this will help you to direct your social media use. Let's move on to the next slide. So let's move on in this session by analyzing a variety of case studies throughout the different phases of disaster risk management or, or more specifically ones that target the specific phases of disaster risk management. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, a few case studies here, uh, one from the National Institute of Disaster Management in Pakistan, uh, OpenStreetMap of Indonesia, which is actually a multi-phase initiative, uh, the hashtag Mythbuster campaign, and the government Twitter accounts currently being used in Nepal, as well as some recovery efforts after Typhoon Haiyan or Typhoon Yolanda in the Philippines. We also have a case study on Hurricane Katrina as well. Let's get started. So first for the National Institute of Disaster Management in Pakistan, uh, this is a representation of how you can use social media to share 
basic good practices at any time uh, where you want to spread information or safety information related to certain hazards. Now what they did is they used their Facebook page to promote the do's and don'ts of an earthquake. So if you were to see the video, which is uh, found in the archives of their uh, Facebook page of uh, NIDM Pakistan, uh, you can see that they shared this video in the local language in order to raise awareness of what people should do in case of an earthquake. Now this is very useful because it shows how Facebook or Twitter or any other social media channel can be used to continue to send out good practices, uh, practices they, that may not be able to find their ways consistently into traditional media. So keeping a few safety videos, information sheets, or maybe infographics, comics, uh, interesting ways to promote these good practices. If you have these on hand, you can consistently send these out at different times uh, using social media. Of course, they'll have to be updated as you continue your efforts. But it's good to have these on hand. Co consistently remind people of good practices towards different uh, disaster situations. You might want to keep these in your archives before, let's say, your country has a wet season every year. So before the wet season, before rains are supposed to become particularly heavy, you could share information on what to do during a flash flood or what to do in case you hear a specific warning sign or what different warning uh, signs, such as sirens or anything of that nature. Uh, what they mean and, and how to respond accordingly. Let's move on to the next example. Our next example comes from Indonesia. It's uh, using a free software program called OpenStreetMap. Now what OpenStreetMap does, it's a free online software that allows people to uh, go online and map uh, certain roadways or passageways on a uh, open and freely updated map. Now what's interesting about this initiative is that OpenStreetMap Indonesia actually had an information campaign where they went to different universities and trained students on how to participate on this mapping website. Now this, partic this is particularly interesting because what it does is it gives people a better understanding of what roads are currently operating within multiple cities in Indonesia. Now why is this important? Well, for mitigation purposes, it identifies which routes are crucial and need to be protected. Maybe such routes as connecting hospitals, police stations, fire stations, so you could actually see what routes are more important, more important than maybe some others. And how if one way is blocked off, how you could get, get to where you need to go using a different one. For preparedness, it can identify evacuation routes or what routes could be best used during a situation, whatever that may be. Now these maps can be updated uh, consistently and uh, information can be added to them. So after a disaster, uh, people, some of the volunteers can go on and update the information on what has been affected by the disaster. Uh, and just as a reminder, OpenStreetMap is built by a community of mappers that contribute and maintain data not only about roads, but also about trails, cafes, railway stations, and a variety of other interesting structures around the city. Another interesting thing about OpenStreetMap Indonesia is that they have a series of YouTube videos available online which one can use if they're interested in mapping 
to go on and actually teach themselves how to accurately update the maps on uh, the website used for OpenStreetMap Indonesia. Let's move on to the next example. The Queensland Police Myth-Busting Campaign. This is one of, uh, one of our case studies that's particularly interesting because what it does is it uses a hashtag to verify information on social media. Now, there are common worries about social media that misinformation can be spread very quickly. Now, this is true, but there are ways to combat this misinformation. One of these ways is by creating a sort of verification hashtag, which the Queensland police did during the major flooding, flooding in 2011, over 2011, 2012, and again in 2013, where rumors were spreading related to the effects of the heavy rains and the flooding that occurred in Queensland, Australia. And the reason why this is so important is because rumors do spread on social media, but this is a way to verify them using a simple hashtag where you could actually search and see which rumors or which myths have been myth busted as it's uh, created for. Uh, and this is very interesting because this is a uh, police organization that has created this uh, hashtag because they realized there was this information they wanted to be seen as a useful resource for the people who are looking for some truthfulness um, amongst maybe some of these rumors that have been happening. Uh, so it's very interesting because it gave uh, residents the confidence to know what was true and what was uh, not true during these devastated, devastating floods in Australia. Let's move on to the next example. Government Twitter accounts in Nepal. This is another very interesting example because before the earthquake that occurred on April 25, 2015, some of these agencies in Nepal did not have Twitter accounts. This includes the Nepalese National Emergency Operations Center, the Prime Minister's Relief Fund, and the National Police, the Twitter account of the National Police. Now this is interesting because after the huge amount of information that was being shared uh, after the earthquake event, these institutions realized that there was a need to create a Twitter account. And even though this was a very good example of response and taking action as far as uh, creating a channel for risk communication, it's, another, it's just a, another reason why it's recommended to have these channels in place beforehand. With that being said, uh, the government of Nepal and the other institutions involved in this case study did a very good job at jumping to action and providing people with information related to the earthquake. This includes sharing information, such as information related to the aftershocks of the earthquake and other useful information that people may have been looking for uh, after a devastating event, such as the uh, earthquake that happened in Nepal. Let's move on to the next example. Another good example of information dissemination using social media was during Hurricane Sandy. During the hurricane, a massive amount of Twitter information was shared and social media was used as a vital source of risk communication uh, when many of the areas affected by the disaster uh, loss of commu communication using traditional sources. Best practices were shared, as well as information related to crucial places where one could go to get aid if they were in need of assistance. Let's move on to the next example. 
Here's an example of a tweet sent out by the official Gazette, which is the official journal of the Republic of the Philippines. This tweet highlights how the recovery funds that were donated to those affected by Typhoon Haiyan, or Typhoon Yolanda as it's known in the Philippines, uh, was used. It's a very clear infographic to show exactly where these donations were used and from what sector uh, they were applied to. So even though this tweet was sent out uh, after, uh, sorry, far after uh, the initial event, it keeps the event in people's mind shows that the funds are being used in the appropriate fashion. In that disaster preparedness should continue to be uh, engaged in uh, in order to prevent a situation like this from happening in the future. Social media during the Haiti earthquake. This next example has to do with the Ushahidi digital mapping tool where the digital mapping team assisted in recovery efforts uh, throughout the uh, earthquake that hit uh, Haiti. Now this was very important because using this mapping tool they were able to map uh, structures that were damaged uh, because of the earthquake. Now why is this important? It's because it, it shows exactly which buildings which key infrastructures were in need of rebuilding and which ones were operating. And with the devastation of the Haiti earthquake, it helped with recovery efforts to really pinpoint where uh, certain destruction took place. So the Ushahidi team helped during the recovery efforts after the Haiti earthquake uh, by really pinpointing out uh, which structures were damaged and where, was, where there was a need for the most help. So let's recap on some of the important things that we've covered today. First of all, as we've said before, it's important to know your audience so you know exactly which people you're trying to target with your social media use. It's important to have a plan in place. It's important to start using social media so people already trust you as an information resource before a disaster hits so they know exactly where to go for information. And it's important to realize that if you are seen as a valued source of information, as an important source of information, that after a disaster event or immediately before one, people will go to your channel and they'll expect to see information that can help them with whatever, whatever event may be incoming and what they can do to plan accordingly. It's always a good idea to take advantage of the tools already available, most of which for free uh, on social media, including the Facebook and Twitter uh, analytics that are built in, as well as some free software uh, such as Hootsuite or buffer that can help you manage your social media efforts. Now, it would be a good idea that after this video, you research some other ways that social media has been used for disaster risk management purposes. Uh, there's a, ver a variety of information that can show you uh, the different ways social media has been used, uh, what worked, what didn't work, and maybe you could apply some of these lessons to your own social media initiatives in the future. Thank you very much.